first subject we're going to talk about is DJI 04. Now, just to be clear again up front, we are not necessarily talking here about a new 04 FPV system. You have to remember, OcuSync is used on all of DJI's products, including all of their consumer drones. And over the years, we've seen OcuSync, which first appeared with the Mavic Pro. So for those who want a bit of a history lesson, um, we first we had Lightbridge, then Lightbridge 2. And the fundamental difference between Lightbridge and Lightbridge 2 was dual band. Then we moved to OcuSync, which first appeared on the Mavic Pro. And the real difference between OcuSync and Lightbridge was OcuSync was an SDR, whereas Lightbridge was a dedicated hardware radio. Then we had OcuSync 2 that appeared on the Mavic Two, Pro 2 or Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. And then we had the uh, OcuSync 3, which first appeared with the current DJI FPV system and then moved through to everything else. Now, we have fairly good belief, and I'm calling this belief because it isn't confirmed, but we have good belief that DJI are releasing 04 with the new A3. Now, there are a couple of reasons we believe this. Number one is all of the leaked stuff. You know, that there's lots of stuff out there that's leaked. A3, and there's lots of stuff in here about it, talking about what they think it's going to be and, and all of this stuff. However, what we really know is the stuff that's on here, which is the FCC filings. And this is where they have to certify it. So... We have, and let me just zoom in a bit so you guys can see it. We have a DJI A3, FCC certified. There are no images, unfortunately, on this, but we do have some test reports. We have a DJI RCN2. That is the basic remote that they ship with their drones. And a DJI RC2. Now, what's really interesting about this, and the DJI RC is the one with the built-in screen that you can get with the likes of the Mini 3, is the fact that they're moving to a new model because for the last probably two years plus, DJI haven't changed their remotes much. So, for instance, the RCN1 has been around a very, very long time. That was, I think, with the originally released with the Mini 2. And then it's been released with all of the other drones over the years, all using OcuSync 3. And then we had the DJI RC, which is the one with the built-in screen, the cheaper version of the RC Pro. But now they've announced an RC2. And the only real logic to them doing this is because there's a new radio system. That's the basics. For them to be replacing both of these will mean it's a new RF system. Now... We can actually do a bit of a look into what they've said in their RF reports. And I've had a dig through this stuff already. And there's lots of info in here. You can see um, the test report data. There's lots of stuff in these. You can see it tells us around the, the, the frequencies. So what we know is it's going to have Bluetooth on board. We know that. It's the, the aircraft is going to have Bluetooth and it supports Bluetooth 5.2, low energy. That, in all likelihood, is going to be remote ID. I'll be honest, that's probably there for remote ID compliance because it makes sense for DJI to integrate that. We've got 2.4 gig Wi-Fi and then beyond the Wi-Fi, 5 gig Wi-Fi. And then we've got the SDRs. Now, the SDRs is the OcuSync. We've got 1.4 megs mode, 3 megs mode, 5 megs mode, 10 megs mode, 20 megs mode, and 40 megs mode. Now, what's really interesting here is 3 and 5, because they're new, okay? In the past, in OcuSync, OcuSync 3, we've had 1.4, 10, 20 and 40. And just the thing to understand here, this is the carrier width. So 40 megahertz is 50 megabits a second, generally in FPV world. 20 megahertz is 25 megabits. 
10 is about 14 megabits on 03 and 1.4 is the RC control link that isn't used for video that is just used for the RC control. Now what's really interesting is they've added two new modes, 3 megs and 5 megs. And it's going to be really interesting to see the effect of them because you're only going to have 3 and 5. I think they're going to be video modes so to allow again better performance better penetration and then if we look at the channels that are available she so got 33 and all of the usual numbers and then they tell us the information for the 5 gig sdr because remember that's the 2.4 gig sdr on 5 gigs we've got the same so you got 5.1 gigs for those who've watched the channel, you've seen me talk about 03 going to 5.1, because it does. It absolutely will go to 5.1 gigs. And then on the 5.8, you've got 1.4, 3, 5, 10, 20, 40. So this is all very, very interesting. Now, it doesn't really go into much more than this, okay? We, we don't really know a lot more other than the basic RF info, the RF power levels, um, DJI has always been OFDM. All of OcuSync has been OFDM, always has been. Um, they do talk a bit about the maximum RF power levels. There's nothing new here. I think it's 31 dBm, nothing phenomenal. Um, and again, it's EIRP, just remember, including antenna stuff, and they go on to a lot of stuff. So the real interesting thing here is we're getting two new bandwidths which we've not had before which is five and three megahertz carrier bandwidths i'm really intrigued of where this is going to end up um and look do we know if there's compatibility with the existing ocusync system who knows the fact that there's new remotes would hint that maybe not but this also hints and in my opinion the potential for a new chipset because DJI have been using the same chipset on OcuSync for a very, very long time. And if we just go to repair.wiki a minute and I'll, I'll go here, there is a full write-up of this chipset on repair.wiki. For those who don't know, I've put a lot of info up onto repair.wiki over the years. If you go under drones and if we go to DJI, the OcuSync P1 chipset, and we talk about the chipset that DJI uses in their system. Now, they actually use two chipsets. They use one called the P1, the Pigeon, and they use one called the S1, the Sparrow. And the difference between the two is one of them is basically just the RF baseband chipset, and the other one is the RF baseband with a um, SOC on. And what they tend to use is the S series chipset combined with an external processor for handling the video encoding. The interesting thing actually is usually what we see in OcuSync 3 ear unit would normally be done with a um, S1. So the chipset and the E3T. Because if you remember in 03, we've spoke and we, we've talked about how they're using the two chipsets. They're using the P1 still. The P1 is there. And then they're using the E3T for offloading the video. Now, usually DJI would do that setup with a um, S1. Usually. So take the Mini 3s and everything. They just use the S1 and an offloaded chipset. Usually, though, they're using a different chipset. And, and that's where it gets a bit complicated because they actually use something like a Snapdragon or something like that. But the basics are the P1 has a built-in ARM um, cores. And the difference really between OcuSync 2 and OcuSync 3 or the digital FPV system in 03 was that DJI added that additional media processor, the E3T. Remember, both the original FPV system and 03 used the P1. And that is why the Vista can be upgraded to 03 because it's the same chipset, it just hasn't got the extra power. So it's really interesting. Now, I think, personally, I think we'll see a new chipset. I've said this at the very beginning. 
um, I think we'll see something new because it's been a long time since DJI have released this. And there has been hints that a new chipset might have been coming quite some time ago. So it's really interesting times. And whilst this may not do anything today, it's what this does in the future. And that's the interesting thing. Um, so that's the facts today around 03 and 04 as we have it. It's going to launch with the A3. Then don't expect this to hit AFPB anytime soon, but it will lay the path for maybe what comes in FPV in the future. And it is interesting when you add in the rumors of a price drop on the DJI O3 ear unit as well. And I wouldn't be shocked even if DJI dropped the price and that wasn't really based on anything else coming in the future. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked. I also wouldn't be shocked though genuinely to see DJI release a reworked ear unit with this new chipset in and not even bring any new benefits. Even if it's just moving to the new chipset on the same protocol to allow them to just use it. Because remember, everything is about purchase quantities. The more they can use it, the more products they can use it in, the more they can buy, the cheaper it is to make. As with anything. You know, if they're taping out 100,000 chipsets or they're taping out a million chipsets, there's a big price difference. Um, remote ID, yes, it absolutely could wind in remote ID. But O3 is an SDR anyway. O3 can do remote ID today. It's just software. It, O3 doesn't need specific hardware for remote ID. It can do it anyway. But that isn't to say they couldn't winding a specific Bluetooth Wi-Fi remote ID element and have that separate from the rest of the SDR. It could make sense for them to do that, actually. So offload that to a separate part of the chipset. Okay, so that's where we're at today. We don't know if this price drop is going to happen, but there is belief of it. Whether that's linked to 04 or not, it remains to be seen.